So once you get this kind of base level socket stuff going, then you can just make your game however you want. Uh, so I'll usually just kind of leave this all in the socket script, and then I'll do the actual game stuff in one of these external scripts, or just a different class. Uh, so a lot of networking is just sending messages back and forth, very basic. Uh, so like say the client will send over the login, uh, so just two strings, maybe a name and a password. Uh, then the server's going to receive that. The server's going to do something with it, uh, which I'll handle in this other script. Uh, then it's going to send something back. So maybe if the login is valid, it's going to send back load information. Uh, then that load information is just going to send over to the client. And once they receive it, then they're going to process that and they're going to load. Uh, so maybe they'll instantiate different game objects and so on. Uh, then once they're in the game, they might start sending their movement. So maybe every couple seconds, they're going to send a position over. Again, that's going to go over through a channel. It's going to hit the server. The server is going to process it. And then usually the server will kind of amalgamate all the different positions and send them back to the client. And then the client's going to move all those game objects and so on and so forth. So it's just very basic level stuff that just keeps going back and forth. Uh, if you've used the high-level API, that's basically what it's doing, except it's written a lot of this basic functionality for you. So it's just using this really, really basic level stuff uh, to do stuff like movement synchronization and loading. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of go into this example here. So what I've done is created a very basic script, a uh, basic game, and I'm going to hop into the squirrel script. So what I've done here is I've made a reference to my sockets, uh, and I've done this on the server as well with that rabbit script. Uh, so the socket and the squirrel both, they have a reference to each other. So they're going to kind of go back and forth. Uh, that What that looks like in the Unity engine, if you click on the game object that they're both on, uh, you have your sockets and you have your squirrel. And then just drag and drop here and here. And uh, just so they have a link to each other. So I'm just going to start. Uh, that's just going to, when the game starts up, uh, I'm going to run this function that I made called do you like candy. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is connect. So again, you could write like network transport.connect and all that stuff. Uh, but how I've set it up, I can just call that function that's already in my sockets and it's very nice and clean. So I just reference my sockets.connect and that's gonna do all that connection stuff over in the socket script. So I don't actually have to worry about it here. Uh, and then the first thing I'm gonna do is wait. So whenever you connect, you usually wanna wait uh, just a fraction of a second because it does take time to connect. If I didn't put that there, this probably wouldn't work. Um, it would try and send stuff before it actually connected. Okay, so what I've done is just created a class and I've called it question. Uh, so you can see that class down here. And I've duplicated that and put it on the server script as well. So they both have the same class. They both know what it's comprised of. Uh, and I made that serializable. So that means you can actually send it over. And this class just has two strings, a main question and a second question. Again, you can make whatever classes you want with whatever data sets you want. You can have floats and positions and all that. Uh, just keep in mind, you can't do vector threes. If you try and do like Unity specific stuff, it's not going to know what that is. Uh, so a good practice for that is to send it over as floats. Uh, so maybe an array of three floats or something like that. But if you try and send a vector three, it's not going to know what you're sending or a quaternion or any of that stuff. Uh, you got to stick to strings, ints, floats, that kind of very basic data. Okay, so I've made one of these classes. Uh, I'm just assigning the variables here to different strings. So basically, this is where you create your data um, in, a, in a version that you'd expect. So it's just a class uh, with some variables and parameters and stuff. But now we want to actually send that to the server. So to do that, we're going to use this network transport dot send function. Uh, so that is going to send uh, just this message to the server. Again, there's there's like multicasting and other kind of networking stuff, but for this, we're just going to just a send function. 
Uh, so we're going to send something there, and they're going to send something back. So what that takes is that error. Um, pretty much all the functions take an error. Um, and then it's going to want an actual send buffer. So what we're doing here is we're taking this class, and we're packing it up in a way that can be sent over the network. Um, so first, so it's going to be sent as an array of bytes, like that. Uh, but right now it's a class, so how do we do that? So we want to convert this array of bytes, or sorry, convert this class to an array of bytes. So to do that, I've made a function called object to byte array, and then I just input that class over here. So I just stick that in there, and that's going to convert it. And then once that's done, I'm just going to call network transport send, and let's actually just go through that. So it wants a host ID. So what I've done is kept all the networking information in my socket script. So I'm just going to say my sockets and then access that variable that's in the socket script. And then it wants a connection ID. So again, that's networking stuff. I've kept that all in my socket script. I'm just going to access it there. Uh, so you're, when you're sending, you're saying, hey, this is who I am. Uh, send messages back to this ID. And then it wants a channel, so I'm going to pick 1 this time, because we use 0 to connect. Um, it's going to ask for a send buffer. Uh, so this is the buff This is the actual information we're sending, just this line up here. So that's the array of bytes. And then it wants to know how big that thing is, so we're just going to say uh, that array, and then dot length. So that's going to log how much, how long it is, and then just the error. And that will send a message out to the server. But let's just go over this here, because um, that is a function that I actually found it on the internet a while ago. Um, just these two here. I used to be writing. I used to write out the whole memory stream format or all that stuff. But it's you'll be calling it a lot, so it's good to have it in a function. Uh, so you can copy paste these. But what that's going to do is this one's going to convert a object to a byte array. So any class that you have, um, it's going to convert into bytes. And this one is going to turn, it's going to go the other way. So if you received a whole bunch of bytes, you're going to turn it back into a class. So when the server gets that question, it's going to, it's going to have this class here. And it's going to convert it back. Again, that's kind of more complicated networking stuff. Uh, just dealing with streams and formatters and all that. You don't really need to worry about it. Uh, just use those functions to convert it back over. Okay, so now we have sent that information. So let's see where that is going to go. 